racism is always a pretty hard call to make because we don't want to believe that other people would be capable of judging or discriminating against other people based on something as arbitrary as the color of their skin. But then Corey Kenshin dropped a bombshell video about YouTube and racism and apparent favoritism in which he highlighted a lot of issues that he says he believes were motivated by race. And it's kind of hard to argue with his logic. See, he was saying that he has been systematically targeted and that every time he hit the trending page, something would happen to his account. What's more, these things that would happen, usually uh, channel strikes or like age restrictions or something, they would happen to his account but very notably, they wouldn't happen to other creators' accounts. And essentially, as this was going on, he concluded that this was happening because of the color of his skin. Now, there's more to it than that, and I'll talk about that in later sections. But then, shortly after that, Jadia dropped a very similar-looking video about Twitch, basically calling them out for being sexist and playing favorites. However, after having watched both videos, I've come to the realization that I think Corey Kenshin is very right and justified in his anger and upset over how he's being treated, but I think Jadeon is actually pretty wrong in why he's angry. Not that Jadeon has no reason at all to be upset about the way he was treated. There is a little bit of justification there. But I think overall, he's just not coming from the right place when it comes to why he's upset about this. So I'm going to go into what happened to Corey and why I think he was right in his anger. And then I'm going to go into what happened to Jadeon and why he was wrong. And I'm going to compare and contrast the two so that you can kind of follow my logic as I'm talking through what's different about Corey as opposed to Jadeon. But before we jump into that, if you're a Jadeon fan watching this, I just want you to know that I don't have an agenda, nor am I any kind of a Jadeon hater. I'm trying to give an unbiased and nuanced take on this whole situation. In fact, in my last video that had Jadeon in it, I actually defended him and his stances against Hassan Piker. So I just want you to know my objective isn't to make anyone look bad. It's just to facilitate a genuine discussion where we think critically about these things. So essentially, Corey believes that he is being racially targeted by YouTube or more specifically racially targeted by people who work in the policy team inside of YouTube. This came after a bombshell of a video that hit number one on trending called YouTube, Racism and Favoritism. And basically in this video, he accuses YouTube of favoring white creators over himself. Now, he made this video because he had played a video game called The Mortuary's Assistant, and it had gotten age restricted. But his was the only video across any of the channels he looked at that had actually been age restricted. And after he had pointed this out to his YouTube representative, he sent a clip of Markiplier playing the same game, and after the policy team reviewed it, they actually lifted the age restriction on his video. However, after he pointed out how weird and racist it appeared that he, as a black black creator was only considered innocent because a white creator had already been deemed innocent around the same material, YouTube came back and they age-restricted both videos. And according to Corey, this is a pattern that consistently happens to him, where he takes some time off, he comes back strong, he hits number one on the YouTube trending page, and then for some reason his channel gets a restriction or one of his videos is demonetized or just something like that. And Corey has arrived at the conclusion that it is because of the color of his skin. And while that seems like a harsh accusation, it's hard to deny that this does seem to happen to him a lot and only when he comes back from a break. It's hard to cry racism because that term can often be over or misused. And also because it's hard to imagine other people treating someone differently just because of the color of their skin. And while I wouldn't say the YouTube policy team as a whole is racist, there's no system of checks or balances against one of the people that worked there that might be. If a single person on the team is racist and the whole system is anonymous, how would we ever know? This is even an issue that Ludwig brought up to YouTube CEO saying that his girlfriend's podcast was consistently demonetized while his podcast, which was much more vulgar and included much more adult themes, never was. And the conclusion he arrived at was that it only happened to his girlfriend's podcast because there were girls running the podcast. Susan, of course, denied this, but... I mean, of course she did. She's not going to say that she thinks the policy team is sexist. No CEO is going to say that about their company. But it's impossible to deny that there is some kind of favoritism going on there, and that there's also some kind of favoritism going on on a larger scale across the gaming creators. 
think it's pretty obvious why Cory is justified. He's been consistently mistreated and had rules enforced on him that are just not enforced on other people. And each time this happens, it seems to be after some kind of big comeback after he's been off of YouTube for several months. Like he'll be gone for nine months with nothing bad happening to his account, and then he'll make some big comeback, hit number one on trending, and then suddenly he's hit with some sort of punishment over a rule violation. And usually this rule violation doesn't appear to be targeted at other creators, rather just at him. Is it racism? That's kind of hard to say, but it's happening consistently enough that it's also hard to rule that out. You can't look at a situation where a black person is being consistently treated differently from his white peers and then say that it's most certainly not racism. And even say if it isn't racially motivated. The policy team is so shrouded in mystery and everyone there is so anonymous that how would we ever know? We physically are unable to gather the information it would take to make that call one way or the other. And honestly, that sucks. And now I want to pivot and talk about what happened to Dion, because while it seems to be a similar situation, I think once you take a look below the surface, it actually turns out it's not that similar, and Gideon is kind of just wrong. Okay, first thing I want to get out of the way is that one of Gideon's big claims is that Twitch is sexist and unequally enforces their rules and basically shows favoritism. That is all true. That has always been true. Twitch has a terrible record of being consistent with punishments and essentially just draws ban times out of a hat. But to give you a quick breakdown, Gideon was banned off of Twitch after he harassed and hate raided Pokimane over the course of several days and then that kind of extended onto a Twitter harassment that lasted several weeks. And for those of you curious about all the things that Pokimane went through, don't worry, um, she made a list. And it is a very long list of things. And while you might claim that Gideon never told his followers to be sexist or cruel, there was no world in which that wasn't going to happen. And once it started, not only did he not attempt to stop it, he actually encouraged it to keep going. And as a result of this, he was permanently banned from Twitch. A harsh punishment, to be sure, but not openly encouraging harassment and sexist comments towards a fellow creator that has done nothing to provoke you is both free and easy. He broke the rules, and he was banned for it. That kind of feels like a closed case to me. However, he recently had a tweet blow up in relation to Twitch's apparent sexism and racism, in which he says, A girl gets effed on stream. Seven day ban. While I'm still here, perma-banned, Twitch is racist. Now, this is in reference to a streamer on Twitch who had sex live and was only banned for seven days. Which, to be sure, is an absurdly low amount of time to be banned off a platform. Now, I want to say this once again before I move on. I'm not saying that Twitch does not unequally enforce their rules. They absolutely do. And that absolutely should change. But Gideon is bringing attention to this in light of the fact that he was permanently banned from Twitch. And while in a video he made about it, he says he doesn't care, but he still uses himself as an example. And this is where I strongly disagree with him. Gideon is painting himself as some kind of a victim here. He is not. He went viral for this, and now he has two huge channels doing insane numbers, and all he had to do was hate raid a female. He's accusing Twitch of treating people unequally because of their gender or skin color, when that's literally what he did. He harassed Pokimane because of her gender. Now, that doesn't mean what Twitch is currently doing is right. I am not currently, nor will I ever make that argument. But it's insanely hypocritical of Jadeon to go after Twitch for unequal treatment when that's literally how he blew up his career. Gideon is the farthest thing from a victim here. He instigated everything that happened, and for his action, he was punished and permanently banned from Twitch. He broke the rules, and then he was banned for it. That doesn't change just because someone else also broke the rules and then was banned for less time. This is just a case of Gideon being right, but for all of the wrong reasons. Gideon is right that the rules are unequally enforced, but his reason for making this video, whatever he may claim it is, is because he's upset that someone else was banned for only seven days when he was banned permanently. If that hadn't happened, I guarantee you he would never have made that video. He's not standing up as some great bringer of justice with a sword to smite down the unfairness that's wrought online. He's upset that after he harassed and sent hate raids after someone, he was then punished for. Him also being right about Twitch being unequal with their punishment is almost more of an accident. He's making a bad faith argument that he was rightfully, if harshly, punished for his proverbial crime. He is absolutely, positively, not making a good faith argument standing up for what's all well and right in the world. To be clear, 
I am not disagreeing with a lot of his points. I agree that Twitch unequally enforces their rules, and I also agree that they're silent on a lot of things that they should probably speak out about. But Jideon, you made your bed, and now for some reason you seem to hate sleeping in it. And all I have to say to that is, just don't harass people. And as always, do not forget to love yourselves and all the people around you, and I will catch you next video.